Hello, welcome to Come Learn with Paula. I'm so glad you'll be joining me today. We are in Revelation chapter 8. So go ahead and grab your Bibles, open them up, and we will get started. Um, if you haven't already done so, you may want to check out the previous videos. And I do have a playlist under, if you go to my channel, and then do playlist, Revelation, and you can just listen to them all in order if you'd like to. However, Revelation is not a chronological uh, study, but I am doing them chapter by chapter. So, okay, we are in chapter eight today. So grab your Bibles and open them up. And if you don't have a Bible, look down below in the more box, just press the button, and then I will have the passage printed out for you so you can follow along if you'd like to. Okay, well, we're going to get started. This is a very exciting passage. And I do like, um, I do have a, a NIV quiet time study Bible that I I get some of these questions from, and sometimes I write my own questions. It just depends. But um, this is a passage that they started out with, and I think it's kind of clever. Uh, it's talking about angels. So let me read it to you. It says, the message of the angels. Angels are quite popular these days. We see them depicted in t-shirts, mugs, and cards. You can get a little pins picturing ain't charming angels. And there's growing categories of books available to show you how to get in touch with your inner angels and other such things. None of this has much to do with the angels we meet in scripture. In the next few passages, you will meet some of God's angels and you will be confronted with their terrible power. Okay, so that's kind of exciting because the angels are going to, you know, at the beckon of God, as God says, go and do this, then they obey, as we should also too, right? So we're going to go ahead and look at the first, um, these are actually, this is the seventh seal. And so, you know, last week we covered seals one through six, but we didn't cover seven. And seven is an interesting seal because in and of itself, it's a whole nother thing. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'm going to read the first few chapters. And um, I, let me just say this about, it says the seventh seal, verse, chapter eight, verses one through five, contains the seven trumpets, judgments, the seven trumpet judgments. So that's what we're looking for. And we're going to look at each one and see what it is, right? Okay, so let's start with chapter 8, verse 1. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And, you know, I think about silence. Silence is, I mean, it's a little bit eerie, right? There are so many noises around us. And last week we had looked, they were holding back the winds. And I think about, I guess sound uh, doesn't necessarily travel on wind, but... Um, I just think they may actually be related in that time period, but um, there's going to be silence for half an hour because this is an awesome time. Like this has never happened. This is going to be the trumpets of God. So let's continue on. Verse two. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God and to them were given seven trumpets. So there's seven angels, you know, we discussed around the throne room of God. So we're in the throne room of God and the seven angels are standing around the throne. And then God gives each of them a trumpet, right? And it's their job to go and blow the trumpet and proclaim this will happen. And it does. Okay, verse three, another angel. So now not the seven angels, but another angel. Another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. So they, that's how they would offer their fire with the golden censer. So he's at the altar. This is Everybody has a job. All the angels have a job, right? This was his job. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. Okay, did you catch that? Did you get, let's read it again. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne and the smoke of the incense together with the prayers of the saints went up before God from the angel's hand. Then, okay, so let's, let's just stop right there. So, uh, did you know that your prayers are, uh, a beautiful incense before the Lord? Isn't that interesting? We don't think about smell a lot in heaven, but, um, just the prayers, the speaking to God and, pleading to God and crying out to God and praying for people and all of that just goes up before the throne room of God as an incense, a beautiful fragrance before the Lord. So 
just think about that. You know, the Lord, that no tear is uh, wasted and God sees everything and he holds your tears and he also um, he loves to hear your prayers. He loves to hear the cries of his children and talking to him. And so this is all going up. And then it says, verse five, then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and he hurled it on the earth. And there came peals of thunder, rumbling, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. So all of this is happening before the first trumpet, right? So God initiates when this starts. It's not just started randomly. You know, it's not under Satan's power or control. This is God. And God says, now is the time. We just had a pause, like something terrible is about to happen. We had a pause. And then now um, the angel took the censer. He filled it with fire from the altar and he hurled it at the earth. So something bad is coming towards the earth at the judgment of God, really. And it says, and there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning and an earthquake. So there's going to be a great earthquake when the trumpets of God start to sound. That's interesting. Okay, verse six. Then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them. Okay, so like this was the start and now they're ready to sound them. The first angel sounded his trumpet and there came hail and fire mixed with blood and it was hurled down upon the earth and a third of the earth was burned up. A third of the trees were burned up and all the green grass was burned up. So let's talk about this one for a second. It's unusual to have hail and fire and blood, right? Um, if it's coming from the sky, you know, we know that lightning is created when the hot and the cold masses meet, right? So, so it's kind of understandable that we would have hail and fire, like heat and fire would create lightning and it would be powerful and destructive. But then we have also mixed with blood, so where does the blood come from? And is this symbolic or is this really a thing? Or does this mean that it was red? You know, I, I, and I don't know the answer. But um, when we're looking through this, um, it almost, when we read all four of these first four, four and it, it almost looks like something's coming through our solar system and perhaps the debris from a planet or a comet or asteroid is red. And so part of that is maybe coming into our atmosphere. It's burning up. It's causing fire. It's cold and heat and blood. So I don't know, but it's something I haven't seen before and it'll be amazing. It'll be scary probably. And then it says a third of the earth was burned up. A third of the trees were burned up and all the green grass was burned up. So this happens in a third of the world, right? So there's a section where this falls on and all the grass is burned up and all the earth is burned up. But then it talks about the, the trees and the earth, right? But then it talks about all the grass. So I guess as it's, as we're turning, you know, it'll be such heat that it'll all burn up. Like all our green grass will be gone. Wow. <laughs> That's going to be a scary day. Okay. So, and also I think about the world worth the earth being so large. You know, if it happens over there, we don't really feel it. We might hear about it. We might see it from, um, you know, on a video or on news, but it doesn't affect us. But this apparently affects the whole earth. Like this, is, you, you're not going to get away from it. Some places are going to be destructed, destroyed, and then other places are just going to be affected. But everyone will know, hey, <laughs> something is going on. Okay, verse 8. The second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain all ablaze was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea turned into blood, and a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Okay, so the first one were like pieces coming, you know, like maybe this is an asteroid, and those are pieces that are coming before and falling, and then a large something comes and falls into, it says a huge mountain all ablaze. So something on fire is uh, very large is coming and it was thrown into the sea. So this goes into the sea. So a third of the sea turned into blood. So here again, we have blood and, um, you know, maybe it has a red, 
um, maybe it's made up of something that is red or, um, you know, blood. I, I, don't, I don't really know. Then a third of living creatures in the sea died, so everything that was in there died. And a third of the ships were destroyed. So whatever was on that part of the water was gone. It was vaporized. It was gone. Okay, so we have pieces, and then we have something big, and it was on the earth, the trees, and now it was in the sea. Okay, let's see what the third one is. Verse 10. The third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. And the name of the star was Wormwood. And a third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. Okay, so now we have a star, and it's falling from the sky on the springs of water. And we're going to see Wormwood. When we see in chapter 9, the angel that had fallen from the sky, I think this could even be the angel that had fallen from the sky. It was, uh, the name of the star is Wormwood. So um, this is very interesting. So now we have all the waters affected and people were dying because the waters were polluted. Um, you know, I'm reminded in, um, in the Old Testament and it talks about the water being bad and then Elijah threw something, a salt in the water or something and then they could drink it. You know, um, God will take care of us. If we're here, or his people, people that come to the Lord during the this time, um, God sees us, God knows us, God knows how to fix things, he'll help us. But it is quite fearsome, it, it's terrifying, right? But um, no matter where you are, or what the situation is, God is with us and God will take care of us. Okay, but this is quite terrible. Okay, let's look at the fourth one and that's verse 12. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet and a third of the sun was struck and a third of the moon and a third of the stars so that a third of them turned dark and a third of the day was at without light and also a third of the night. So this is something outside of our immediate. It's in the atmosphere, in the um, space, right? Um, and I don't know if that means that the sun was actually struck or the moon was actually struck, um, but the stars were struck and a, a third of them turned dark. So I'm not exactly sure if that would just be as the world's turning, you couldn't see during a third of the day or if something up there was actually struck. But um, it, it sounds like something massive is coming through our atmosphere and it disrupted uh, everything so that now a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, a third of the stars, and a third of them turned dark, and a third of the day was without light, and a third of the night. You know, that would affect our growing season. It would make things very dark. Um, it, would, it would be terrifying, really. Okay, and then the last verse in this chapter says, As I watched, I heard an eagle that was flying in midair cry, call out in a loud voice, Whoa, whoa, whoa <clears throat> to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blast about to be sounded by the other three angels. Okay, so we have three, four. <clears throat> four have already happened and there's seven. <clears throat> so we know there's three more. And the three more, he says, are worse. <clears throat> Very <beautiful thing. clears throat> the three that are coming are worse than the four that have already happened. <laughs> so, oh my, my. <clears throat> so this is, you know, this is revelation. This is what we read about. This is what we talk about. And um, this is at the seventh seal. This is the seventh seal. And the seventh seal contains the seven trumpets. And the first four are terrifying, right? Um, but the world will know, hey, this is, this is, this is bad and this is going on and we are all involved in this. So uh, hopefully it will get some people's attention. I have a couple questions here. It says, uh, what similarities do you note between all these events? Well, um, you know, fire, <laughs> hail, blood, um, destruction. And it, it, to me, it, they all, they, they all must happen at the same time. Like, it's not like, months in between. I think this is an event and it's happening and it strikes this first and then it strikes it strikes the 
the trees first, this, a third of the world. <clears throat> then it strikes the sea, and then it strikes the springs, and then it strikes in the air. Like it's, it's just boom, 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 one right after another. So it's great destruction, right? Um, anyway, if you have any other ideas of things that are similar, put that down in the comments below. And then I put, um, does such a response by God seem justified? Explain. Um, you know, we live in a world where, you know, mercy and grace, mercy and grace, love, peace, joy, mercy and grace, right? Um, so we don't really understand uh, how this all plays in, but God is a God of justice. You know, it says it is mine to avenge, says the Lord. And so at the right time, in the right way, he will call everything to account. And so I feel like he has been very patient with us. And thank you, God, for your patience. Thank you for, I feel like he's put this off um, longer and longer. You know, he's given us more mercy and more grace and allowed more people to come in right? Uh, he would that none would perish. It doesn't bring him any joy to bring destruction to the world. This is his, um, you know, his baby. He loves us. And so uh, I think it would be terrifying for the people and um, heartbreaking for the world. I think that's why there's silence for half an hour. It's like, oh, time's here. The time's here. It's, this, it's the end. And then we know that Satan is going to rule for three and a half years in this fallen place. And we know that um, God is coming back. Jesus is coming back to get his own. And then there'll be a thousand year reign. Um, you know, the enemy will be defeated. And um, there will be a thousand year reign. So, so many things are going to happen. And this is just part of it. But if you see these things happening, you will have studied Revelation and know that, oh, this is all part of the plan. So it's okay. And I just want you to know that God is with you. God loves you. These are not things that we have to fear. But, you know, we need to have a holy and fearful reverence of God, right? I mean, he is, um, he, he is God. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And, you know, he is, Satan is not his equal. Satan was created by God. So he is the created one and he wants to rule and he wants to reign and God's like, yeah, but I'm in control. So whenever these things happen, it's all because it's God's timing, his perfect timing. It will happen. We know it. His judgment will be true and sure, but um, don't fear Okay, next time I'm going to come back on real soon and we're going to do chapter nine and we're going to see what the other two trumpets are, or three, and the three woes, right? Like what's worse than this? <laughs> so, okay, <clears throat> have a good one and I will talk to you soon. Thanks, bye.